You're about to enter the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. The home opener as Arizona plays its first ever game at UNLV. Fireworks before the game, fizzle after kickoff. Head coach Bobby Houck analyzes what went wrong and what changes might be ahead. Plus, this night belongs to Las Vegas. A UNLV legend finally reaches the hallow halls of enshrinement. A look at Jerry Tarkanian's induction into the Hall of Fame. We're ready to step inside the red zone. Do you want it? Oh, let's go get it. This is the Red Zone Sports Show, only on Fox 5. Hello and welcome inside the Red Zone. I'm Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV football coach Bobby okay. Houck. Definitely a rough one last night against Arizona. We're going to break this game down in a moment, but first, let's look back at what happened. Big dogs on me, big dogs on three. One, two, three, big dogs. Oh, let's go get it. A big crowd and lots of fanfare greeted the Rebels as they took the field for a huge test against Arizona. Unlike week one, the UNLV offense could not get in a rhythm early, failing to get first downs. Arizona took advantage using their no huddle offense. After an early field goal gave the Wildcats a 3-0 lead, B.J. Danker hit Nate Phillips to convert a third and nine. On the next play, Danker kept it himself and raced 35 yards for the score to make it 10-0. The Rebel defense made a stand on the next Arizona possession. On fourth and seven, Jordan Sparkman comes up with the sack and UNLV was in good field position at the 41. After crossing midfield, quarterback Nick Sherry can't find a receiver, gets crushed and coughs up the football. Marquise Flowers picks it up and returns it to the nine yard line. Two plays later, Danker runs it in from four yards out to make it 17 nothing. Let's go, Ho! UNLV trying to get back in it. First play of the second quarter, Sherry hits Devontae Davis and he races 69 yards for the touchdown, but the point after snap was botched and it was 17 6. Arizona star running back Kadeem Carey didn't play in the first quarter, but his first touch of the game in the second showed why he was the nation's leading rusher last season. 58 yards for the score and the floodgates were opened. Carey ran for another 12 yard score to make it 31-6 and the Rebels were rattled. Midway through the second quarter, Sherry throws one right to Arizona's Jake Fisher. He runs it back 49 yards for a touchdown. Then another misread as Sherry throws another pick six. This one to Tremaine Bondurant and a first half of horrors ends with UNLV down 45 to six. Keep your hands up! Let's go, let's go, let's go! In the second half, UNLV made a switch at quarterback, benching Sherry for senior Caleb Herring, who returned to signal caller after a year at wide receiver. Herring was three of five for 14 yards. The bright spot of the Rebels in the second half, this 79-yard touchdown run by Shaq Murray Lawrence. And Arizona controlled this game from the very beginning, and the Rebels fall 58-13. Well, no way to sugarcoat that. That was ugly, Coach. Uh, I guess the, the simple question is, what happened? Because it looked like uh, the, there weren't many positives to take out of this game. No, not many. You know, we're playing a team in Arizona that's better than us, and, and uh, they went out and we turned the ball over. Uh, there were some occurrences where they were better than us. Kadeem Carey was better than us in certain spots. And then there were plays where we didn't fit a couple of their run plays very well. And one of the problems with triple option football is if you – get your eyes wrong or you get out of your gap or you over pursue something then they pull it out I, you know their first touchdown we watched with the quarterback he pulled it we we were very conscious of the running game obviously and he pulled out and, and uh, was able to make the play he can run um, and then again the turnovers are just uh, uh, we can't score for the other team I mean in the last two weeks we've uh, we've had numerous touchdowns uh, scored in fact uh, basically six where our defense wasn't on the field. And we just can't have that. And, and that's got to got to be something that going forward we don't do. And, and I think we can do that. I think uh, uh, as soon as next weekend, where we aren't playing a Big Ten team or a Pac-10 team, we're going to have a chance uh, to fix this thing. And, and uh, we'll figure out here as, as we move through September if we're going to be any good or not. 
the quarterback situation. Take us through the process of deciding to make the switch, when that conversation started, and how that evolved going yeah. into halftime. Well, I mean, we talk about it all the time. We talk about it in the pregame uh, meetings with the coaching staff uh, on what eventuality would cause us to change our quarterback and who's in the game. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of a, um, a there's, there's a lot of things going into it. I mean, we go from, from uh, a week ago setting a, a school record for completions in a game to uh, not playing very well. And so, yeah, it's really on me to, to get uh, our quarterback or quarterbacks to, uh, to play more consistently. That's, that's uh, my job to get that done and, and we'll continue to uh, evaluate. I would assume we'll compete it this week and then we'll kind of make a decision probably as late as game time on who starts, but I'd anticipate both those guys get to play a little bit next weekend. So as you go into Monday practice, is there one quarterback that's going to take more snaps with the first team throughout practice, or is it really going to be a true quarterback competition uh, like we see in the summer? You know, those are those are things we got to talk about a little more today and tomorrow, and, and as we get into Tuesday's practice, we've probably got to make that decision on which way we're going with it, but uh, I think we'll let those guys compete a little bit would be my uh, initial reaction to it. Nick Sherry was fairly efficient last week at, at Minnesota, and then this week kind of reverted back to some things that maybe we would call freshman mistakes in terms of, of reads uh, and, and what was going on. What happens there in the mindset of a quarterback that, that they can take a step back like that? Well, I think part of the maturation process is for all quarterbacks in all positions, obviously the quarterback position's uh, the most visible, but to, to play consistently well, to be able to cut it loose, after you uh, you make a mistake and uh, not let them build upon themselves and and part of uh, uh, what's happened to Nick is that uh, the mistakes stack upon each other and you know everybody makes mistakes it's it's making repeated ones and uh, you know I've got to help him improve on that that's that's my fault not his defensively uh, 397 yards rushing for Arizona and it looked at least uh, from field level where we were that a lot of the, the wars in the trenches were lost and they were obviously a very big off physical offensive line as well. Yeah, they're good up front and then obviously they've got the maybe the best back in the nation in Kadeem Carey. Uh, as I said, there were a couple times where he was just better than us and made some plays, but there, there, there was a tackle pull play they ran. They uh, ran very well uh, off the read look that we didn't, we didn't fit real good and uh, we've got to fit that better. Uh, just wasn't played well at times. Uh, Carey's uh, uh, first touchdown was on that play. And, uh, you know, we just need to, we, I thought we tackled pretty well when we were there, but there were some things where we just didn't, uh, didn't play it well enough. And, and option football can do that to you, and especially when they have gifted, fast athletes in space. Uh, you know, they can, they can expose you, and we got to expose some. We'll have more on this game and what happened inside it in a few minutes. But first, we want to talk about a halftime of last night's game. Governor Brian Sandoval on hand to award UNLV the hardware from winning the Governor Series. A couple of hundred Rebel student athletes on hand to be honored with the award, which pits UNLV and UNR head to head for athletic and academic excellence in all sports throughout the year. Now, UNLV dominated the competition, more than tripling the Wolfpack score. The governor says that this is an added element to the in state rivalry. It just takes it up one more notch if, if it didn't need it already, but uh, everyone's real excited about it. When you talk to the athletes from both schools, you say, what's the one game on your schedule that you've got circled? And when you talk to the Rebels, they say Reno. And then if you talk to the, the Wolfpack, they say the Rebels. Round one of the Rebels last year was the first year of the Governor's Series. We are just getting started up next in the Reb Zone. The Rebel players react after last night's game. Plus, we're going to start our look ahead next week with a preview of Central Michigan. What will Coach Houck and the Rebels be preparing for? Find out next in the Reb Zone. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Got to make plays, and, you know, personally, I didn't make plays, and, um, you know, I didn't perform, and, you know, I didn't give us a, our, our offense a chance to score, and you can do it as a quarterback. We just didn't execute. Simple as that. They, they did a good job at coming out and executing their game plan, and we just didn't do that. You know, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, we were trying to build on something positive, but we can't let this get us down. Team need to know that that's unacceptable. 
to go out there and do that on our home field. And so next week we need to come out really ready and, and, and ready to go. This hurts us, you know, this this loss, these two losses, these past two weeks, just it really hurts us. And we got the type of guys that instead of folding and going to the tank, we're going to come back on Monday and we're going to be ready to work and ready to get a W. We're going to turn the season around. All right, losing to a Big Ten and a Pac-12 team, not necessarily unexpected, but the way that things happened last night, I guess the question would be, is the mental makeup of this team such that they can rebound from, from what happened, put it behind them, and go back to work here for the final 10 games of the season? Yeah, I think you get to find out who you are and if you have enough character to do those sort of things. And, and I, I think we have a lot of character on our team, but I think the, the staff will... Uh, We'll, we'll bounce back, and I think the players certainly will. I think we have a lot of mental toughness. We have a lot of character. Um, we knew that uh, being 0-2 at this juncture was not uh, not out of the, the realm of possibility, certainly. And, and uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter how it goes. You're, you're either 2-0, 1-1, or 0-2 at this point. We're 0-2, uh, and we've got a good Central Michigan team coming in. We have to rally back this week and regroup and, and have a great week, week of preparation, attack the week, as I, as I like to say, and, and uh, see what we're made of on Saturday. In t terms of finding out what your team is made of, will you know that when you get with them again on Monday, or will you really not know until you take the field on Saturday? Uh, you know, you get a sense for it during the week, uh, but I, I, I already know. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I already know what our guys will do this week. They're going to come out with their hair on fire. They're going to grind. They're going to work hard this week, and we'll have a good effort. Now, the, the effort, we played hard. We played, we played hard each of the last two weeks. It's the execution and making the plays and doing the little things right that you have to do in those games when you're playing up especially. But really in any game, you have to do that. And I already know what our, how our guys are going to respond. I, I know these kids. I know what they're made of. I know what we've put them through in order to get to this point. And so we'll have a good week this week. We're going to put Arizona away, and let's start turning our attention <laughs> Thank to goodness. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and do that. Maybe wish we could have put them away before we played them. But, yeah, let's, you know, they have a good team. Let's go on to the next one. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I could care less if I ever watch that film again after tomorrow. All right, we are going to put it away. Let's turn our attention to this Saturday coming up, because up next for UNLV, as Coach said, the Central Michigan Chippewas out of the Mid-American Conference. It has been a rough start to the season for Central Michigan. In the opener, they were pounded by Michigan in Ann Arbor 59-9 and in the process lost starting running back Zerlon Tipton to a season-ending ankle injury and starting quarterback Cody Cater to a broken collarbone. Yesterday against New Hampshire, Alex Ziznak took over the quarterback job, but after he was ineffective, the Chippewas turned to redshirt freshman Cooper Rush, who rallied them to a come-from-behind 24-21 win. Head coach Dan Eno said Rush earned the start against UNLV and will likely get the first start of his career on Saturday. The ground game is still an issue as Central Michigan tries to replace a rusher in Tipton who ran for 1,500 yards and 19 touchdowns last season. Sandler Lavalli will get the bulk of the carries, but this is clearly an offense that is dramatically different in just two weeks personnel-wise as they make the trip west to Las Vegas. All right, this is a team, obviously, that has some issues right now as well. What can you tell us about Central Michigan? Well, we're kind of getting on to that this week. We, did, we watched them a little bit in the offseason. Uh, the history of their program is they've had a solid team for, for quite a while. Obviously, they were in a bowl game last year. They had the number one player taking the NFL draft off of their team. We're kind of glad he's not there, but that just speaks to the caliber of player they've got in their program. So um, there'll be a, a challenge, certainly. They're a team that's used to winning games. They'll come out here and play their, their tails off. They're coming off a win. They rallied back and uh, beat the University of New Hampshire yesterday, which is a good win and a good program. For those that don't know uh, about New Hampshire, I mean, that's where uh, Sean McDonald does a great job there. That's where Chip Kelly came from uh, in terms of his coaching lineage. So um, good test this week. You, you alluded to some of it. It's, it's a lot about us, but it's some about them as well. Yeah, their quarterback situation, losing obviously the starter in the opener against Michigan, then their QB2, if you will, ineffective, and they bring in a guy who was third on the depth chart as they started just two weeks ago, and now he's thrust, it looks like, into the starting role here. How much of, of an emphasis will it be on getting that lead early and trying to put the game in his hands as they move forward? Well, he did a pretty good job of it yesterday, you know, coming off the bench and, and rallying him back for a win. Uh, sometimes that's easier, easier than when you know you've got the start all week. 
Um, so we'll see. We'll see how he responds to that pressure. That'll, that's uh, uh, kind of about them. For us, uh, you know, we've got to spend time knowing what they're trying to do to us and, uh, you know, frankly, playing our best game. It's, and obviously, you game plan the opponent, but for us, it's really about going out and taking care of details and executing because we're, we're playing hard. We're playing physical. Now we need to play well. The win, obviously, is the most important thing, but getting the swagger back on this team also yeah. is just as important. Gaining, gaining some of that. I mean, it, it, it's hard to maintain uh, a lot of confidence uh, when you haven't won and, you, and you're not making the plays when, it, when it's uh, your turn to make them. But, uh, you know, I, we're not lacking that, I don't believe. I know uh, personally I feel good about this team still, even though last night uh, Arizona just, they just got after us and, and drilled us. But, uh, you know, we'll come back this week and play well. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock at Sam Boyd Stadium for Central Michigan on Saturday night. Now, we're going to move away from football for just a little bit because straight ahead, he is the most influential person in UNLV athletics history. Of course, we're talking about Jerry Tarkanian. And today, Tark the Shark entered the Basketball Hall of Fame. We have a look at the induction of a legend as the Red Zone rolls on. Watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Five hundred nine wins, four Final Fours, one national championship. Jerry Tarkanian's numbers at UNLV put the running Rebels on the map as he led one of the most feared programs in all of college sports. Today, Tark the Shark received his long overdue induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Tarkanian. This afternoon in Springfield, Massachusetts, Tarkanian received a standing ovation as the culmination of a career comes with enshrinement. All of Tark's family was on hand to watch, and his Las Vegas family, the Run and Rebel fans, watched from afar as Coach Tark rose to the occasion in poor health and still read part of his acceptance speech. I have loved, I have loved the game of basketball since my earliest memories. Basketball has been good to me. I've been able to be comrades with some some finest individuals in the coaching profession. Sure, we can be fiery, competitive, heated, and argumentative, but we all love the game, that special game of basketball. And deep down, most of us truly understand the other. Thank you for your, for your friendship. Finally, thank you all of the fame for giving me the special honor. It means so much to me. In his 31 years as a college head coach, Tarkanian racked up 729 wins and only 201 losses. That 784 winning percentage ranks 10th all time among NCAA basketball coaches. And Although you weren't here when Tart coached, and it's a different sport, his impact on UNLV athletics uh, is still felt uh, in every sport. Well, you know, from a distance, I was always a big Runner Rebel fan. I mean, they were our team. We cheered for them every year. I don't know if that's the uh, outlaw on me or whatever, but I love Tark. I love the way they did business. I love the way Coach Gerg's coach defense. I mean, it was just fun to watch. And for me, you know, I'm starstruck when I'm around the guy. I mean, he's just great. And Stacy Ogman, for that matter. So it's been, it's been fun to get to know those guys. And 
ran into Danny Tarkanian. He came by the radio show a couple weeks ago, and they're just such quality people. And Jerry and Lois have been not just great for UNLV basketball and UNLV, but just for the whole city of Las Vegas. I mean, they're, they're well known. They've given so much back to the community. It's just, you know, it's about dang time he went in there, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing cartwheels for everybody involved with UNLV. I would assume that even in the football recruiting trail, when you go into somebody's home, UNLV, the first thing maybe you get a lot, especially the parents now, talk about is Coach Tark. Well, you know, there's a reason why those four letters mean something. It's because of Tark's teams. I mean, people know, people recognize UNLV because of Jerry Tarkany. We uh, are not done yet. We have some final thoughts on the week ahead and the week behind us. But as we go to break, we want to show you how other teams in the Mountain West did on Saturday. Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. All right, so we head into week three, 0 and 2. But if you look at this schedule here, you have a stretch coming up here as we wrap up on the Reb Zone that are winnable games on paper if you look at it for UNLV. Yeah, and we can't, you know, that's for you and I a little bit to talk about. We can't talk about that with the guys. They have to be really focused on this week and, and Central Michigan. But, you know, I, again, the first two weeks, as you and I have talked about, we, we played up. The Big Ten, the Pac-10, we didn't fare very well. Uh, now we've got uh, what we feel is a level, level playing field the next few weeks. And, and this week we've got Central Michigan uh, coming to our place. And uh, we hope that people will give us another chance to please them because that, that was not very fun uh, for anybody, us or our fans. We appreciate everybody coming to the stadium. We want them to come out and give us another chance to show you we've got a pretty good team. All right, let's have some okay. fun next Sunday on this one after a win. 7 o'clock kickoff us. at uh, Sam Boyd Stadium, Central Michigan, and UNLV. Thanks for joining us inside the Red Zone. We leave you with some of the Rebel football plays of the week. Good night.